All right, so we are looking at simplifying i to the 35, i to the 99. So again, these are the problems where you want to take the power and divide it by 4. So 35 divided by 4 gives you a remainder of 3. Because it's 8, so you get 32, remainder 3. That means that i to the 35 is really like i cubed, which is really negative i. The additive inverse, again, different than the complex conjugate we talked about yesterday. The additive inverse is the opposite of both the real and the opposite of the imaginary. So it's negative 2 and negative 3i. When we get to simplifying expressions, if there's no negative under the square root, then there's no i. So the square root of 40 is kind of like the square root of 4 and the square root of 10. So it becomes 2 square roots of 10. A negative and negative, like an 11, doesn't change or cancel those negatives. The outside negative stays. The inside negative becomes an i. And the square root of 36 becomes 6. So we get negative i and 6. Okay, and then down in examples like 12, 13, you're just combining like terms. So you'll add the ones to the ones and the i's to the i's. I do want to look at an example like 16 to 20 because those are our foils. So let's say for example we do something like 16, 1 plus 5i and 1 minus 5i are called complex conjugates of each other. So this is an example where you have two complex conjugates. This is also kind of like a factored form of a difference of squares. So you do your FOIL, which is first, outer, inner, last, Combine like terms, so negative 5i and positive 5i cancel. And you get 1 minus 25. Fill in a negative 1 where i squared is. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So 1 plus 25 is 26. And it should make sense that 16 simplifies to a real number. Because by definition, if you multiply two complex conjugates together, you get a real number. That's the idea behind a complex conjugate, is that if you multiply a number's binomial by its complex conjugate, you get a real number. Okay, so again, these problems are all sorts of scattered. You go from i's to square roots and back again. So let's look at something like 25. So now we're looking at an example where we have a negative, a value, and a variable. So the negative under the square root becomes an i. 88 is 4, so if you do 88 divided by 4, you get 22. 22 is 2 and 11, those are both prime. So the highest perfect square that goes into 88 is going to be 4. So 4 times 22 would give you 88. So we simplify the square root of 4 to be the number 2. So that becomes 2i x to the fourth is a perfect square. So the rule is you take the four divided by two. 
So we get x squared. So we have 2i x squared. And then we left behind the square root of 22, which does not divide by any perfect squares or simplify any further. Number 29, this is an example where you have to rationalize the denominator using the complex conjugate. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus 7i. Because remember, you only change the value of the i, which means I need to FOIL top and bottom. So you do first, outer, inner, and last, over, first, outer, inner, and last. In your denominator, the middle term should always cancel. We change i squared to negative 1. So we get 4 plus 30i minus 14 all over 1 plus 49. So 4 minus 14 is negative 10 plus 30i all over 50. And you could take a 10 out of each of those terms, and you'd get negative 1 plus 3i all over 5. And again, either this answer or this answer are perfectly fine. But you do need to get down to one of the two of those. The last type of example that was on this review guide from the notes this week would come from the area at the very bottom at the back, 51 to 62. So these ones are labeled as solving. So we're going to solve these problems using the square root property for solving equations. We actually learned that property in 5.3, but now we're going to use the property with negatives. So what you do is isolate the squared and then take the square root of both sides. Anytime we take a square root, we add the plus or minus in front because taking the square root of something squared guarantees two answers. So taking the square root of something squared guarantees those two answers. So then you get x equals, and once again, 80 is going to divide by the perfect square 16. So we get the square root of 16, which is 4. So it's plus or minus 4i square roots of 5. because 80 was 16 and 5, square root of 16 is 4, the negative became an i. So that's really representative of two answers. It's representative of x equals 4i square roots of 5, or x equals negative 4i square roots of 5. That plus or minus is really just saying that there are two answers there. Or if you wrote them out, they would look more like that. So that's a summary of each of the different types of equations and functions that we have looked at this week. Um, are there any questions that you have for me on anything that maybe you're still unsure of that you saw in this packet that you've seen on your homeworks? Yes. No, um, so typically if, like, you know, we have standard form or you, like, order your exponents, like, 
from the greatest to the least. So typically, um, the only time it would matter is if they say in complex number form. So like if you were taking this on like a standardized test, um, and that's A plus BI, so like the standard form of a complex number is to write the real and then add the imaginary. That's like the standard form of a complex number. But I, it would be no different than if you wrote like x minus x squared. Like that's not wrong. Just sometimes we rewrite it as like negative x squared plus x. So complex numbers have the same commutative like properties of addition. Uh, that's just our definition. So, and then the only other important thing is memorizing your cycles of I. You just need to make sure you memorize your cycles of I. So your homework is just to finish that packet. The Dropbox is already there. If you um, had previously submitted, that Dropbox allows two submissions, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, canceling out or deleting your prior submission. The Dropbox is set to allow two PDFs. And it timestamps each of them, so I'll know uh, kind of which one is which when going about and looking at them. So if you didn't notice, I did put your quiz scores on Skyward. If you want to look at that score, um, I'll call you back up in groups of, you know, two or three. And if you want to see your quiz, come on back and grab it. If you don't care, just don't come back. I'll add you to the pile of people that don't care. No problem either way. So I have Spencer, Kate, and Lily. Anybody want to see their quizzes? And then when you guys are done looking at them, you can just put them back on that chair upside down. What? No, this is the quiz we took on factoring. So I put your scores in yesterday. You can just set it on that stool right upside down. That works perfect for me. Here you guys go. Good job. Uh, Jacob, thank you. Good job. Colleen, Jake Mel. I didn't realize I was going to pass them back. Bob, good job. Yeah, not much to look at. Thanks, Jake. You. Jalen. Enzo. Cool. Much better. There you go. Good job. Ryan, here I'll spare you the getting up. Tessa and Lexi. I don't know if you saw that. Great job. <laughs> really? You were probably my highest score. Well, no, you definitely were. Hey, Noel. 
I bet you I tried to like end it and like I don't like you know what I mean? Hey guys, I'm 24. Cool. Pretty. Oh, really great. Um, I'm 24. It should be the square root of negative 5 times the square root of positive 5. I think like when I typed it on the program, I forgot to end my square root. Like to the square roots in a square root. I just like I goofed up my square like so just pretend it's a square root times a square root like I'm gonna go fix it on my document but I can't obviously change what you physically have multiplies by yes yes that one you got you, okay so you should have like move the one, then multiply by the two. So you have lost, you put the two here, but that's it on the one, and that should be the next one. Like the one? Something in there. Uh, if you put the one right here, here, here. So that would multiply, like, what? X equals negative one half x, right? Yes. So your goal is to set it equal to zero. So to get that equal to zero, you multiply both sides by two. So that gives you two x equals negative one. Negative one. And then you get two x plus one equals zero. Sorry. That's why I was like, I, I need to I was like, I need to write this down. I was like, I can't tell her. It's like I was like, I can't point. It's made me laugh. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I was very like I was like, uh oh. okay. Yeah, you can. So we have eight. No, no. Brody, here's your test. Cool. Anybody still have this like, else that I've given it to, or do you guys all bring me back to the car? Brayden? And Nick? I guess we. And again, just six twenty four. Yes, you may. <laughs> 